Anatomy and Physiology 2, Anatomy of the Male Reproductive System. The male reproductive system is important for the synthesis of male hormones, primarily testosterone, as well as for the production, maintenance, and transport of gametes. In males, uh, those are the sperm cells. Clearly, you can see here the external structures, the penis and the testes, and we'll also consider some of the internal structures later. For reference, I've included some of the anatomy of the urinary system. Shown here is the left ureter, which would be attached to the left kidney, as well as the urinary bladder. And the right ureter has been removed for clarity. We had previously talked about the production of sperm in the testes. Uh, now we'll talk about some of the structures that sperm encounter after they've left the testes. Shown here in pink is the left epididymis. It contains tubes that leave the superior side of the left testis and travel back behind, kind of posterior and inferior to the testes. It contains a coiled network of tubes that as they store sperm, also subject them to maturation factors. Sperm leaving the lower end of the epididymis travel through this tube here called the ductus deferens or the vas deferens, which travels up and into the abdominal cavity into the posterior side of the urinary bladder. This wider region at the end here is called the ampulla. And where the ductus deferentia merge, they form the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct is subject to secretions from the seminal vesicles, shown here in pink. This is the right seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicles produce a slightly basic or alkaline solution as well as secrete prostaglandins and nutrients. This duct next enters the prostate gland, shown here in pink, and the duct then merges with the urethra. The prostate gland secretes a fluid that's a little bit acidic, and it contains citrate, which is a nutrient, as well as prostate-specific antigen, PSA, which aids in liquefying the semen after ejaculation. We can't see the bulbourethral glands in this particular section here because there's two of them and they lie laterally to the section. But the bulbourethral glands are <clears throat> small, about a centimeter in diameter, and they secrete a fluid upon sexual stimulation that lubricates the urethra. The urethra travels through the penis, through a mass of spongy material called the corpus spongiosum, and ultimately exits the penis. There are spongy tissues in the penis, shown here in pink, that can become engorged with blood and promote an erection. The superior structures are called the corpora cavernosa. There's two of them. And then the lower one that surrounds the urethra, there's just one of them and it's called the corpus spongiosum. Upon stimulation, there's a secretion of nitric oxide, which serves to dilate the arteries entering the penis, increasing blood flow. And with that increase in pressure, there's a constriction of the veins leaving the penis which blocks the exit of blood so that can sustain an erection.